Good morning. Uh, today is Wednesday. Having some coffee with you. No, it's not my first cup, but it is my last cup of coffee that I'm having with you. It's still morning. Um, anyway, decide to check in and keep you guys posted on um, recovery. Um, hi, my girlfriend Julie came over yesterday and she made us dinner. She made burgers and salad and it was so nice to visit with her. She said my color looks great. Um, she was because she came over like after my mastectomy, she came over and like she had to like massage my arm because of lymphedema and she just came and sat on my bed and she goes, your color looks so much better this time around. And that's because this surgery is easier than the other surgery as far as everything that was going on up in here. Um, really kind of harder on my core because that's where they took all my fat donation to even all this out. Uh, no, I still haven't seen what's in there because um, I'm under strict rules to keep this wrap on um, until I see the doctor. I'm supposed to keep it on at all times. And after Julie came over to visit, she watches that show called Botched, which is all about botched plastic surgery. And she told me a story about a friend of hers that, because I'm not allowed to lay on my side either, even though I really, really want to. And I'm not supposed to lift my arms above my shoulders, but I can. My arms, I have no pain in my arms or my armpits, and so I can do that, lift them above my arm, uh, shoulders without any pain or any trouble. Um, but you're not supposed to do it to keep everything even and symmetrical and let it heal up and let the swelling go down. And uh, so she told me that she was watched that show botched and you're not supposed to take anything off, including the surgical bra, because they gave me a second one of these. So I thought it was okay to change it out. And she says, no, did they tell you to change it? And I said, no. She goes, then just take it to your appointment. And that's when you can put the clean one on. You're not supposed to see what anything looks like until they see you at the doctor's office for your follow-up. And my follow-up isn't until Tuesday. So I still have a ways to go. Um, but I'm hoping by then I can get my drains out. And so my reason why my follow -up, first follow-up isn't for 11 days is because the drains have to be very tiny amounts of fluid in them. And by then, about, about 11 days out, she says it's usually time to take them out. So it all works out okay. And then I can be revealed and unbandaged. And uh, anyway, so my girlfriend was telling me that she had a friend that said, screw it, I'm going to sleep on my side because really how bad can it be? And then she said that she slept on her side and this boob was all squished up. And because it was her own fault, she had to pay for the surgery herself. So for a year, she was saving up money to fix that boob. So I'm trying very carefully to not sleep on my side and to not lift my arms above my shoulders, even though I feel like I could do both because I'm not having any pain, really. All the pain I have is like on my sides here. And uh, yesterday it felt like my left nipple was um, hurting, but it's really funny because I don't have a nipple there. So that's just probably um, psychosomatic, however that works. Like people who lose a leg, you know, they feel like their leg itches. So it's the same type of thing there. Um, but I have bandages all, everything's bandaged up, all my scars and all my sores and stuff. And so that's starting to itch now because I'm like perspiring from the hot flashes and stuff like that. So everything's kind of getting all yucky whatever so it's itching like crazy more than anything i'm having a lot of problems with itching my abs are still really sore and um if i press on them i can tell where all the surgery scars are at because i can feel the pain uh so yeah so anyway i'm progressing i'm doing better yesterday i didn't i only took one pain med during the day and i didn't take it until like one o'clock in the afternoon um, and I didn't take a nap yesterday either, which is huge. Um, probably won't be the same today because I slept because now I'm tired because I didn't take a nap. So, but it's slow and steady, things like that. Um, my friend asked me, I was talking to my friend Scott on the phone this morning and he asked me if I pooped yet because that's a real concern. And yes, I have started going poop for reals, um, so far. So I took the stool softener again today because everything's like, hard poop I know that's gross sorry but and chunky but um uh, but starting to get that out of my system which is good because that binds up and is painful to be constipated too but the meds and the surgery and the anesthesia make is all part of the process so I usually don't worry about it until after the third day and then I'm like okay I need to start pooping but I started pooping yesterday and today did pretty good so anyway 
Um, and yesterday I sponged bath myself and shaved my legs in the tub, which was awesome. And then my husband washed my hair for me. So I stood on a stool in the kitchen and leaned on the sink with my arms and tucked my head under the spout and he washed my hair and he was so blown away with like how thick my hair is because it's really growing in pretty thick right now, but it's at this awkward stage again because um, I really want to grow it out. And so if I cut it, I'm just going to always be in this awkward stage with the wings and stuff like that. So, um, but it's starting to change colors again. Can you see how dark it's getting? I'm starting to lose. I'm down to like seven shades of gray now instead of 50. So, um, and I don't have that cute little pixie look anymore because it's all just, whew, whatever. Um, but anyway, I washed it and I didn't put any gel in or, or anything like that. So that's why it looks like this today. But we washed it and it felt so good. And then today, um, it's not supposed to rain today. So when my husband gets back, he's in a meeting, a work meeting this morning. Don't worry, he took care of me and he wouldn't have left me if he didn't think I was okay on my own for an hour or so. And it's true, I'm okay and everything's like at, you know, level reach on the counter that I can reach. And uh, so, and he did my drains and stuff, so we're good. So he'll be home soon, I'm sure. But anyway, we were talking about maybe going for a walk around the block, bundling me up and getting outside and getting some fresh air, which will be good. And uh, having a little asthma problems, but I think a lot of that is also the tightness of the bandage. We did take it off for a few minutes just so I could breathe, and we rewrapped it to make it more comfortable. Um... Yeah, other than that, that's what's going on. I've been resting like I'm supposed to. I'm trying really hard to be good and not do any botched up work <laughs> like Julie was telling me about because that scares me and I don't want to have more surgery. Um, hot flashes are still driving me nuts. Having one now as we speak. Um, but it'll pass and then I'll be freezing and then I'll have to wipe off again. But it's okay. It's part of the process. So I was taking the vitamins for my hot flashes, vitamin B6 and vitamin E that the oncologist told me I could take and that seemed to be helping ease some of the hot flashes. But vitamin E is considered like a blood thinner in a way because it's the oil based. So I was not allowed to take it for two weeks before the surgery and I can't take it for two weeks after to prevent excessive bleeding, blood thinning. So um, I think that's part of the reason why my hot flashes are going batty again, but it's okay. It's two shall pass, right? And uh, I start my new, I start my new med on November 1st for my um, anti-estrogen med. And they said that could make my hot flashes worse. <laughs> but if it does, I might ask for the antidepressant then because I don't know if I could take worse. But Anyway, so that, I have that to look forward to, to start that new med and see how, you know, sometimes it can make you feel like you're going crazy when you take those meds. So we'll see how I do on that. Um, I have a bone density test coming up in December, and I have to have a bone infusion done in December also, um, which you do right in the doctor's office, and it's about 30 minutes long or something. I don't know how that'll go, but we'll see. Um, but for the most part, I'm really hoping... I'm over the worst of this, and 2016 can be done and over with, and 2017 can start living my life again. So I plan on signing up for Bloomsday, and I plan on signing up for the Susan G. Komen race again, because that's a pre-qualifier for Bloomsday. And um, I, oh, I also entered my blog into a contest for a website, so we'll see how that goes. And I got a call from the genetic testing place because um, I volunteered to sign up for studies there and so I got to call them back and find out what they want me to do or if it's something I can participate in or not I don't know we'll see and uh, yeah that's it I'm getting stronger the pain is lessened got to wash my hair had a friend visit and make me dinner um, gonna go for a walk today enjoying my coffee um, taking less pain meds, which is good. Weaning, you know, weaning off of that, which is good because that means I'm just getting stronger and everything's healing up okay. Uh, itching like crazy. And, um, yeah, just checking in, letting you guys know I'm doing all right. Then I'm pooping, pooping, still on my antibiotic. And, um, yeah, 
talk to some friends on the phone, thankful for Facebook to be able to interact with people. And uh, anyway, yeah, so again, no exercise today because again, I'm still on really tight restrictions, but um, outside of going for a walk. So if you guys are capable to do it and your weather is good, you should go for a walk too. And I'll probably check in again after the walk and let you guys know how it went. And uh, I'm thinking next week I can probably start leg exercises because she did tell me I could do legs. So that would be squats and um, lunges and um, calf raises. So we might do a workout together next week, um, especially after I get the drains out. And then um, I have a breakfast date next weekend. I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, yeah. All in all, life is good and uh, moving along okay and happy coffee morning to you. That last cup of coffee is just as good as the first. So, um, hoping to have some tacos soon. My husband's been trying to help cook, which is great, but he doesn't eat the same way I do. Oh, and he did help me make a protein shake today, so I did start my protein shake process again. And uh, so, yeah, lots of salad. I got to get some fresh salad, though, because the batch he bought me already went wealthy, and we only had it for two days. I hate it when that happens, but it's okay. And my son cut up all my veggies for me the other day so I can throw it together. But, yeah, so I was trying to get back on the track of eating healthy again. And uh, it's a slow process, and then you crave things when you're under the influence. So, anyway. Um, like butter. I'm really craving butter and bread. Toast. I want toast with melted, tons of melted butter on it. Oh, that sounds so good. But we'll see. We don't keep bread in the house, so uh, not on a regular basis. Anyway, uh, I love you guys. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for keeping up with me. Uh, I'd love to hear how you guys are doing on your recovery process and what it was like for you for different stages of different surgeries. And um, yeah, have a blessed day, and I'll check in with you guys again in a couple of days, or maybe even later on today, depending if I get that walk-in or not. So just, you know, keep your mind active. Uh, don't give up. Remember that you are stronger. Drink your water. I'm still drinking lots of water, too. So I love you guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.